How's it going guys? My name is Voss and if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, today we're going to do a little bit of story time, but first I need to get the car clean because it seems like anytime I start my vlogs or anything for my channel nowadays, my car's either dirty or it's out of, or it's out of gas. It's one, one or the other. So let's get the car washed and let's get to it. Okay, so today we're going to do a little story time, and it's pretty much my car buying experience with the M3. Now, I ended up with an M3 that was way better than I ever imagined. Um, shout out to Suburban Ford of Ferndale. They gave me a very good price, M3. Bought it with right around 11,700 miles. It's got about 15,200 miles now, so it's, you know, I absolutely love driving this thing. The manual, every part of this car, from the color to the carbon fiber roof to the interior carbon fiber to the six speed just every part of this car has just been perfect and you know there's plenty of cars that are faster than this but for me it was the driving experience and the connection and this definitely does the job so i i am just i want to say like i am blown away from this car it has exceeded my expectations i understand where that jump from the 335i to the m3 shows up now and this car has just been amazing but what i want to talk about today is my car buying experience and how I actually almost ended up with a much different M3. I almost ended up with an M3 um, that was space gray with a fox red interior. Now I'm not going to get into the dealership or any of that stuff because it was a very negative experience for me and I don't, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to point blame or point fingers or any of that stuff so we're going to leave them out but I'm going to show some pictures and everything and kind of my my interactions and I, I got a new phone so I don't have all the text messages anymore from uh, the guy I was dealing with but I can tell you most of it from memory and I have some pictures to go with it so let's get to it so I probably decided on an m3 probably in the end of October November and I told myself in 2019 one of my goals was to buy an e92 m3 that that was the one thing now how I decided actually I don't think I've ever mentioned this. There's another vehicle I was looking at. It was a Noble M400. And yeah, that is an entirely different vehicle. It was that, I was looking at that, a Lotus um, Elise or an Evora or one of those, and a uh, Noble M400, and then the M3. The M3 for me was just kind of the childhood dream car. That's what I wanted, but I kind of also wanted like some full-blown race car for the street or some lightweight um, with not a lot of uh, tech, just a little more of a driver connection and feel. Um... I don't regret buying the M3 at all because it's been the best of both worlds. It's extremely connected to the road and it's got all the creature comforts, which in my opinion, the Lotus and the Noble kind of lack. Um, the Noble would have been cool. I, I really also, I like, I wanted the Noble really bad, but it didn't make sense. I had a similar suspicions about that vehicle as well, given the mileage and everything that was wrong with it. But that's, that's for another time. I was looking for M3s. I found a couple in California and I'm in Ohio, so I really wasn't interested in driving or flying all the way out there and driving a car back unless it was a very very like steal of a price very you know low 20s would have, would have probably prompted me to go do that but it wasn't worth it um and i found this car in um i i want to say cars.com or auto trader one, one of the sites and um it was space gray with the fox red interior had 24,000 miles and it was a six speed and it was priced around 34 900 35 something like that i'm like wow for the miles for the you know for what it is that's that's not so bad let me see and i you know i gave the guy a call 
and I was like, hey man, I, I'm interested in the M3. And um, they're like, okay, great, you know, this is the price. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm, it's a little out of my price range. I'm looking to be somewhere in the 32, 33 range, you know? And the guy's like, okay, well, let me see what I can do. I'll, I'll give you a call back. So, so far the conversations have been great. Everything was going as planned. I was super excited because it, you know, it felt like we were going to get, you know, meet somewhere in there and I was going to be able to take home a really nice M3. And, um, comes back. He's like, yeah, um, we can't, we can't do 32. We could probably do like 33.5. And I'm like, okay, 33.5 probably puts Matt like 35 something out the door. And I was like, ah, that's, that's not bad. I was like, all right, well, I, I'm interested. Let's, you know, can I see some more pictures of the car? And he's like, yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll get you the, get you those in a second here. Can I get your, can, can you give me your license info and all that stuff? Let's get this started. I'm like, sure, no problem. So I get him all that stuff and I never hear about the, I never get any pictures through text message, which was kind of my first red flag. I call him back. I'm like, hey man, you know, I, I was looking for some pictures. Can I get some more pictures? He's like, yeah, no problem. I'll get you those in a second. Never got any pictures. So that's when I was like, okay, what's going on? I see this M3 and it had a, it had a wrap on it. That was the other thing that worried me. It was space gray, but it had a disgusting wrap on it. And I don't generally buy wrapped cars, but sometimes you can get a better deal. And if you know what you're doing, it might not be so bad, but you know, I, I was like never getting pictures. I'm, I was getting tired. I'm like, all right, I found other ones. We'll just, we'll just roll with it. Finally testing back some pictures and I asked for close ups of the trim, the front bumper, the splitter on the rear. Uh, the car was in a fender bender at one point. So I wanted to see, and, and that was my concern. With a fender bender and having a wrap, did they actually fix everything underneath or did they just wrap over it? But that's for, you know, that didn't matter because I didn't end up getting it. But um, um, I was like, can I get pictures? And I want close ups. And he never sent them to me. He finally, after three or four times of me texting and calling, asking for pictures, he finally sends me pictures. And these pictures are blurry. I can't see what's going on. He, he always chose to send me a video instead of a picture, I'm like, no, listen, I want a video. I mean, I want a picture. Videos don't send that great over text. Um, and he always would send me a video and he wouldn't really point out the things I asked about. I'm like, you know, what's this, that I, I said, you know what? There's one way to do this. Let's go get a PPI. We, or I, I was looking into PPIs around the area and there's a lot of reputable BMW shops over there where I was looking for this vehicle. And I was like, you know, here are the two shops that I, I called up. I asked both of them. They seemed very knowledgeable in what they were talking about because I did my homework on the M3s. And I was like, all right, I feel comfortable with the peop the car going to either one of these shops. And the guy calls me back. He's like, yeah, no problem. I'll go drop the car off. I'm like, great. I'm like, well, when you get there, give me a call. I'll pay for the PPI and we'll go from there. And he, um, he drives the car and drops it off. He's like, hey, PPI has been dropped off at the so-and-so shop here's the guy to call if you have a question i'm like perfect can you and make sure you call him and pay as well i'm like yeah no problem so i call i didn't you know i called up the shop where he told me he was taking it and he um i called and asked for the guy i think i don't remember the guy's name was luke or something i call and ask him like hey can i talk to luke and he's like uh we don't have a luke here i'm like like you don't have a luke well i just scheduled a PPI and had it dropped off and the guy so the guy who dropped it off from the dealership told me to talk to Luke and he's like, nah man, we don't have a Luke here. I think you got the wrong number. And I was like, okay, so I got a little concerned there. From there I was I called this guy back up, the guy selling the car. And I'm like, listen, I just called the, the place for the PPI and they said they don't even have a Luke. And he's like, well here's where I took the car. And I'm like, so I looked it up and he took it to this other shop, which is not the shop that I requested him to take it to. I'm like I told you we're doing the PPI at one of these places. This is where I found reputable. And he's like, he's like, no, don't worry about it. We, we took it down here. They're just down the street. The other place is a uh, 45 minute, 50 minute drive from, from the dealership. I mapped it. It was 0.9 miles from the dealership. So I don't know what 40, 50 minute drive he was talking about, but it was literally a mile from the dealership and he chose to take it somewhere else, which is not where I asked. I was like getting a little concerned because I'm not going to pay for PPI when it's not been done where I requested it with what I was looking for and what I asked. I specifically told the guy over the phone that my concerns and the wrap and all that stuff. So another couple hours go by and he calls me. He's like, Hey, I need you to um, answer your phone or he texts me. He's like, I need you to answer your phone. Um, uh, PPI is done ready for, we're ready for payment. And I'm like, listen, this is not where I asked you to do the PPI. This is not acceptable. He's like, well, here you can call, you talk to the guy. I talked to him a little more and while I was still pretty upset that he chose to take it to get a PPI at somewhere I did not tell him to, 
The guys seemed nice. I did some looking up on the shop. They seemed okay, like good. They seemed good. They seemed reputable. They weren't my first preference, but you know what? I was okay with it. PPI is like 200 bucks or something, which was kind of high, but the guy went through with a fine tooth comb. I'll put some pictures. I felt confident in his work. He talks to me and he's like, well, here's what, you know, he's like, it's only got 24,000 miles, but here's a couple of my concerns. All of the plastic trim up top on the sides and whatnot, it's peeling and bubbling real bad. And some of the metal areas is starting to rust. I'm like, this car's from Florida. I talked to the original owner. I got his information um, and he explained the car, the wrap stuff for me. So I felt a little more confident, but I'm like, why would it be rusting? And he's like, I have never seen a car with 24,000 miles. I've never seen an M3. And he's like, I've seen dozens of these um, have that kind of issue. And it's a little concerning. I'm like, okay. He's like, oh, so the inner wheel, uh, like the, the fender liner, the wheel liner, he's like, it's pretty much all chewed up and gone. And it doesn't look like it was caused from rocks or anything like that. He's like, I don't know how this hole got in here, but it's like, it's pretty much beat up and needs replaced. I'm like, okay. He's like, drove fine. Transmission was fine. Engine seemed fine. He's like, we can't do a Blackstone analysis because we can't get one done in time. But he says it felt fine. He didn't hear anything and there's no signs. And I'm pretty sure after 2011, a Blackstone analysis on the engine doesn't really actually tell you anything because it's, I don't think it's traceable. They changed the material, the rod bearings. I could be wrong. Comment below if that's wrong, but I'm pretty sure on that. So I said, okay, well, I was like, and then he finally summed it up. He's like, it's missing some vent clips. It's missing some interior panel parts. Uh, the trim is beat up. He's like, the wrap's pretty much gone. He's like, you're going to you're gonna have to start taking this wrap off. It's pretty shot. And he's like, we're looking at about three to 4,000 in cosmetic repairs. And I'm like, okay, let's, let's see here. So I call the sales guy back up and I'm like, listen, I'm at the, I'm at the shop or I'm talking to the shop owner and Luke, honestly, really good service. He did, he did a great job. He told me everything. He texted me pictures. He was very upfront with what everything costs. He wasn't ripping me off with all the repairs and whatnot. I looked it up. They're pretty much true to what he was saying. So, you know what, even though it wasn't my intended PPI place, I think he did a fair and nice job and gave me a great quote and he was willing to give me a discount on the work. And he said, the other thing is it needs brakes It needs brakes and, and rear tires. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, you know, all in all $4,000 of work. So I call up the guy, I call up the dealership, talk to the guy selling the car and I'm like, you know, we were at 36 out the door, which would have been fair if it had a, you know, a couple thousand in repairs, but we're looking at four some thousand in repairs. That's too much. I'd like to be closer to, you know, 35 out the door. You know, that I feel, uh, give me, you know, I'll eat the other 3000. We'll make this work. And he's like, all right, I can't do that, but I'll talk to my boss and see what I can do. He comes, he calls me back a day later. And by this point, I'm getting ready to go on vacation. So I told him, I'm like, if we don't get this done, I'm going to be out of the country for two weeks. We'll have to do with it when we get back. He's like, oh, he's like, the car's got a lot of interest. The car's not going to be there. Let's get this done now, which isn't true at all because he wouldn't be trying to sell the car to me this badly if, if it had a lot of interest, you know? So I was like, you know, I, I can't. I can't be at 36. I need to save that extra bit because the rear tires are bald. I'm gonna have to buy brand new rear tires as soon as you buy it. As soon as I buy it, it's snowing really bad outside. I don't want to drive it home in that condition. It's gonna need brakes. And he's like, well, my boss says he'll do 35.5 out the door. So I'm like, I'm like, you know, that's that's not bad, but I still have to do about 4,000 in work. I don't think it's worth it. Let me think on it. So a couple days, you know, go by. I get ready to go on my trip. I'm like, listen, man, I'm not sold on that price. I'm going to think on it through the two weeks. He's like, he's like it's probably not going to be there, but okay, no problem. I was like, okay, well, if it sells, it sells. You know, I can't do anything now. I'm out the $200 or something for the PPI, but it is what it is. Um, and if someone's looking by, I'm like, you know, I already have a PPI done. Don't, and you shouldn't hide that. If you already know what's wrong with it now, you shouldn't hide it. And something I kind of want to give me another red flag, which worried me a lot is when the PPI came back. The guy texts me. He's like, the car is clean. And I'm like, I'm like, what? How is the car clean if I have to spend $4,000 on it? And him and I were arguing about what we considered a clean car. He's like, it's a used car. It'll never be perfect. It's always thousands of dollars of repairs. I'm like, yeah, but this car is showing symptoms or is showing signs of, of wear and tear that is not common for the mileage. So I'm like, the car is not clean. And he was kind of stretching the truth, twisting his words. He'd use slogans and slangs like, I'm going to work for you. Like it was it kind of threw me off the, the entire time. So, but anyway, back to my, back to my main point, I, I went on vacation and he texted me while I was on vacation. I told him, I'm like, listen, I'm out of the country. He's like, yeah, man, well, we got other buyers interested. You know, let me know if the car, uh, you know, I'm, I'm letting you know first because you've already done all this work on it. 
he and I was like, no, don't worry about it. If it's gone, it's gone. If it comes, if it's back, you know, I'll take it. Two weeks go by. I come back. Guess what? It's still available. And I, I figured as much. I mean, if that guy was trying to sell it to me that badly, I didn't think they had other interest on it. So I, um, I uh, call, I call him back up. I'm like, listen, I'm back in the country. If he'll do 35 out the door, I'll take it right now. I'll drive up and I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up as soon as uh, I'll pick it up Monday. And he's like, all right, let me talk to my boss, see what we can do. He's like, you know, we can't do 35 out the door. 35.5 is the best. I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll take it for that. You know, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm not, I wasn't, I was still a little shaky, but I'm like, you know, I can probably swing it. I can do a little bit of the work myself. We'll figure it out. He calls me back. I'm like, okay, so I'll give you, you know, I'll put the down, I told him I'll put the down payment in and we'll go from there. He calls me back an hour or two later. He's like, hey, I have great news. And I'm like, what's that? And he's like, hey, um, our internal shop did an inspection job on the brakes and the brakes are fine. Those PPI guys lied to us. And I'm like, and this is where I was like, what? Because another quick backstory, I was trying to negotiate, well, it needs brakes. If you do 35, we'll, we're not worry about it. We'll do 35.5 if you handle the brake job, you know, if you repair the brakes. So that's kind of where we settled on. But back to the main point, he's like, hey, the brakes are fine. We don't have to do anything. He's like, it was just a sensor. Um, the brakes are perfectly fine. The PPI guy was lying, and I'm going to call him up and c complain to the owners because they were trying to screw you over on a brake job. And I was, and I called that other, I called the PPI guy, and he's like, no, man. He's like, the brakes are pretty much gone. He's like, there's no, there's very little, you know, uh, actual brake pad left, and you pretty much need to replace them. So I was like, okay, what's going on here? I'm getting a little bit suspicious. He's like, well, the brakes are great. So, you know, we said we would fix the brakes to do 35 if the brakes are good, 36 out the door. So now he went he went back on his price and jumped back up to 36. And I was like, that's not what we agreed on. We agreed on 35.5. If the brakes are fine, you don't have to do any service. So it's still 35.5. And he's like, no, 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 it's 36 now. My boss says he can't do under 36. And I'm like, no, you know what? I'm over this. This whole, this whole experience has been beyond miserable, you've been extremely inaccurate, falsely telling me claims, telling me about the car that wasn't accurate at all. The damage that you claimed to be clean had showed no, it was not the car I was looking at, maybe you had a different car in your lot that was similar that you were explaining to, but it was not the car you're trying to sell me. I'm like, I'm over this, I'm done. He's like, well, okay, good luck with your, he's like, good luck finding one, you won't find a better one. I was like, all right. But, so to recap here, my moral of the story is, I nearly got, I almost got a car which was not much cheaper than this one. This one was a little more, but it was a, I wouldn't say a steal. It was very fairly priced for what it was, but that I almost, with the mods would all, or with the repairs I would have done, would have came up to the same cost as this guy. And the guy was just, I got such a bad feeling from the salesman. And he was, like I said, the words and the terms, high pressure sales tactics, high tax, just the way he was speaking just did not, you know, did not work for me. So I'm, and moral of my story is, you know, be very careful, get a PPI, make sure the car is clean, especially if you're driving out of state. I had to drive seven hours to go pick this car up. You don't want to show up with all this stuff happening. It's, you know, I'm glad I got the PPI, even though it wasn't where I was interested in. But, you know, what I'm trying to get at is be careful when you're looking at a vehicle, do your homework, and make sure you know a little bit about the vehicle so they don't try to sell you something you don't need, try to screw you over on stuff. And, and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to, tell you guys the dealership's name. I just, it's not worth it. I mean, I'm sure other people have had horrible car buying experiences, but this was one of my worst ones. And I nearly, you know, lost thousands of dollars on a car. And, you know, with the signs and symptoms it was showing, who knows what else was wrong with it. But I ended up picking up the Melbourne Red M3, which they only made, I think, 380-something coupes in Melbourne Red from 11 to 2011 to 13, of which I think 1% or something were manual of which only a few percentage were um, competition packed. So this car is pretty rare. I I, I almost want to say there's less of these than there are Lime Rocks, but I could be totally wrong. At least manual Lime Rocks. There was 150 DCT Lime Rocks in 2013, 50 manual Lime Rocks. And I think there's less than 50 of this spec in Melbourne Red. But, you know, so it's pretty rare, but it's I guess the Lime Rock is still a little rare. But no, I'm very pleased with, my, with the vehicle I ended up with, and I've had it a few months now, and... I mean, I've pretty much had no maintenance to it other than tires. Tires have been expensive, but other than that, it's been amazing. So, guys, if you enjoyed this video and if I can, you know, if I helped you at all with some of the tips and tactics to better make your car buying decision, get a PPI, 
get ask for a lot of pictures. Don't feel bad. You're spending a lot of money. The car salesman should give you exactly what you want, uh, picture wise, and answer all the information you have. You know, um, and just really be careful. You know, do your homework. Make sure you know about the vehicle. Don't let the car salesman pressure you into something you don't need. And you know, in the end of the day, you can end up with a fantastic vehicle for probably a better price, if not you know less repairs and, and less of a headache. You know, so if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button, subscribe. Don't forget to enter my GoPro giveaway. Um, it's live right now. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube, and once we do, one of you can win a brand new GoPro Hero Seven Black. But thank you for watching, and I will see you next video.